This begins with a contradiction. Nuclear energy promises endless power, yet summons fear wherever it appears. We imagine towering domes, political deadlock, and meltdowns. But beneath that noisy debate, something smaller, quieter, has emerged. In a remote region of China, an unassuming facility came online. No fanfare, no panic, just a hum, steady and new. A small modular reactor, not science fiction, not a concept, real power already in the grid. While most of the world argues, China builds. The question isn't whether this technology works, it's why almost no one is paying attention to what's quietly powering the future. The idea that changed the reactor. For decades, nuclear power meant one thing, massive facilities with mile-wide exclusion zones, decades-long construction, and billion-dollar price tags. But that model is breaking. The demand for constant carbon-free electricity is rising faster than we can build. That's where small modular reactors, or SMRs, change the game. They're not just shrunken versions of traditional plants. They're reimagined from the ground up. Built in factories instead of on-site, SMRs promise consistency, safety, and scalability. Instead of 10 years, construction could take just two. And their modular nature means you can add units like Lego bricks, tailoring capacity to local needs. One powers a small town. Five could anchor a city. Safety isn't an afterthought, it's embedded. Most SMR designs include passive cooling systems that don't rely on pumps or people. If something goes wrong, nature itself, convection, gravity, and pressure differentials step in. And unlike fossil fuels, SMRs operate with life cycle emissions as low as wind and lower than solar. No smoke, no smog, just quiet heat, fueling clean energy. It's not about replacing coal plants with nuclear giants. It's about putting safe, efficient power where it's needed most, without waiting decades to do it. The Pebble Reactor Nobody saw coming, hidden along China's northeastern coast in a place few outside Shandong province could point to on a map, sits one of the most radical energy experiments on Earth. It's called the HTRPM, short for High Temperature Gas-Cooled Pebble Bed Modular Reactor, the name sounds clinical. The reality is anything but. Instead of metal rods, this reactor is filled with thousands of small graphite spheres, each packed with tiny uranium particles. These pebbles generate heat through nuclear fission. But here's the twist. Instead of water, the coolant is helium gas. Helium doesn't become radioactive, doesn't boil away, and doesn't corrode. That means fewer failure points and a safer, more stable core. What's even more surprising is that the system doesn't rely on external power to stay safe. If the coolant flow stops, the reactor naturally cools itself through conduction and radiation. No meltdown, no chaos. When it quietly entered commercial operation in 2023, it became the world's first grid-connected SMR of its kind. No headlines, no global attention. But the implications are massive. Because in this modest plant, China has proven a concept that dozens of startups are still trying to get right, and it's already lighting homes. Linglong won and the race to certify. While the HTRPM grabs attention for its exotic design, China's Linglong One is making waves for a very different reason, approval. Nestled on Hainan Island, Linglong One is the world's first small modular reactor to pass a full safety assessment from the International Atomic Energy Agency. And that alone changes everything. Unlike its pebble bed cousin, Linglong One relies on pressurized water, proven, understood, and already in use around the world. But here, it's scaled down to just 125 megawatts, one-tenth the size of a traditional reactor. That's small enough to power a rural county, a remote industrial park, or even serve as backup for a sprawling coastal city. Inside, water flows through the reactor core, capturing heat from uranium fuel. It then transfers that heat to a secondary loop where it turns to steam and spins a turbine. What's new isn't the physics, it's the packaging. Factory-built sealed systems that simplify installation and cut construction time. And Linglong isn't just designed for electricity. It's capable of desalinating seawater or heating buildings. 
One machine, multiple roles. With its first unit nearing completion, it might be the most export-ready SMR on the planet, and China knows it. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. America and the SMR puzzle. Across the Pacific, the story is more complicated. The United States has no shortage of SMR designs on paper. Dozens of startups, labs, and think tanks are reimagining nuclear with fierce ambition. But very few have made it past blueprints and simulations. The most advanced new scale, once hailed as America's SMR frontrunner, secured the first ever U.S. design certification. But that milestone was quickly overshadowed by spiraling costs and canceled projects. Then there's X Energy, backed by Amazon, working on its helium-cooled reactor concept. It's promising, futuristic, and stuck in the same bottleneck, money. Unlike China, where the state absorbs massive R&D costs, American developers are tied to venture capital, federal grants, and hesitant utility partners. It's not a lack of talent. It's a mismatch between vision and infrastructure. Even with government support, deploying a modular nuclear plant still requires navigating environmental permits, community resistance, and grid integration challenges that can take years. America has the technology. What it lacks is alignment. And while engineers perfect fuel types and cooling systems, time slips away. Meanwhile, China is already exporting reactors. The real danger isn't falling behind in science. It's losing the will to build at all. The data center dilemma. There's a silent energy war unfolding, and its front lines aren't power plants. They're data centers. As AI expands and cloud services grow, these digital fortresses are devouring electricity at an unprecedented rate, and the curve is steepening. By 2030, global data centers could consume over 5% of the world's electricity. That's more than some countries use in a year. Big tech knows this, and they're not waiting for politicians to catch up. Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are quietly investing in small nuclear plants. Not for press releases, but survival. Unlike solar and wind, which fluctuate with the weather, SMRs offer constant output. No spikes, no dips, just stable power around the clock. A perfect match for servers that can never go dark. Microsoft has already hired a director of nuclear energy. Amazon is backing X Energy. And Google has thrown its support behind startups that promise grid independence. This isn't about publicity. It's about keeping the lights on in a digital world that never sleeps. SMRs might not replace all fossil fuel plants overnight, but for data centers chasing net zero, they offer something rare, reliability. In the race for clean, unbreakable energy, the servers are voting, and they're choosing nuclear power. Uranium's rising tide. Uranium is the heartbeat of nuclear energy, over 95% of all reactors use it, and with the rise of small modular reactors, demand is about to surge. But not all uranium is created equal. In its natural state, it's mostly U-238, useless for fission. What reactors need is U-235, a rarer isotope that must be enriched from mined ore. That makes uranium both essential and complex to produce. A single ceramic pellet of enriched uranium contains as much energy as a ton of coal. It burns clean, without smoke or carbon emissions, and powers reactors steadily for years. This rising demand has attracted companies like Uranium Royalty Corp. They don't mine directly, instead, they fund producers and earn royalties on the uranium extracted. It's a model borrowed from gold and oil, now reimagined for nuclear. Modern mining methods like in-situ recovery reduce environmental damage by dissolving uranium underground and pumping it to the surface. As more SMRs go live, the race for secure uranium supply chains will define energy security for decades to come. Costs, Myths, and Monte Carlo Models SMRs were pitched as affordable, but early results are mixed. U.S. and European projects face overruns, Monte Carlo models show many designs still aren't cheaper than wind or solar. But remember solar in 2005? 
Expensive, niche, and slow. Now, it's cheap everywhere. SMRs could follow the same curve once production scales. The trade-off, reliability. SMRs deliver consistent baseload power. No batteries, no backup, no blackout gaps. Australia's lab predicts SMR costs will drop 50% in five years. If that holds, SMRs could quietly become our most dependable clean energy source, but only if we start building now. If we start Buried promises. The waste question. Nuclear waste lasts for millennia. That's the truth. And even with SMRs, the issue remains. Deep geological storage is our best current answer, but best doesn't mean perfect. Some designs promise less waste. Others claim they can reuse it. But Stanford's research complicates things. Many SMRs may create more waste volume per energy unit, even if it's less radioactive. This doesn't doom SMRs, but it does demand honesty. Clean energy isn't just about emissions, it's about legacies. We bury carbon in the air. Nuclear waste at least stays put. If we can solve waste, safely and transparently, SMRs become even more powerful. But pretending it's not a problem? That's a mistake we've made before. The future won't be powered by one grand solution. It will be pieced together quietly, modularly, persistently. Small modular reactors aren't flawless. They come with questions, risks, and resistance. But they also come with a promise. Real, tangible, grid-connected promise. While others debate, China builds. While others plan, tech giants invest. The shift isn't loud, but it's happening. One sealed reactor at a time. And maybe, just maybe, that's how real change begins. Not with headlines, but with hums in the background. Because by the time we realize what powered the next era, the wires may already be buried and glowing.